Welcome, organization development professionals and human resource leaders. I was recently working with an executive team. Uh, each of the individuals on the team had indicated to me that trust was an issue within the team. When we pulled the team together and we brought that, I raised that as an issue, the level of trust in the team, and I invited them to speak about it. It was amazing how we went around the table and each person had some version of, oh no, there's no trust issue here. I have high trust in the team. So we weren't able to talk about it. And unfortunately, that's not really uncommon. Everyone knows that trust is a key element, a key dynamic uh, that needs to be strong for the team to be most effective. And yet the downside of saying we have low trust feels like a gut punch. Uh, it's hard to say. It's perceived to be a slam on the, the state of the team, if it's a team, or if I'm looking at an individual to suggest that I have a trust issue with you, uh, is a slam on your character. So teams, unfortunately, are unable to talk about and therefore strengthen one of the most important dynamics uh, that set it up for success or failure. Today, I want to give you a language to talk about trust more effectively. It's a set of discrete factors which are involved, any of, one of which might be in question, uh, that make me feel or others on the team feel less safe, less able to bring their best. Some of these factors are personal factors, that is, I attribute them to the individual or individuals involved. They're relatively persistent. They're based upon observation and perception over time. They don't change readily. Think of them as kind of a scorecard uh, that we base our trust on, the trust scorecard, if you will. So I would rate you, if we're on the same team together, I would rate you first on sincerity. Do I believe that you believe you're telling the truth as you know it? The second is reliability. Do, do I perceive, believe, that if you make a commitment, you'll do your darndest to make it happen? Now, these two are related to one another, but they're also distinct. I can, in sense, uh, believe that you believe you're telling me the truth. I get that from your tone and, and how animated perhaps you are. Maybe what data you bring in. You believe you're telling me the truth. I may also know that if you're making a commitment that uh, uh, you have a history of not following through in a timely fashion. If you do it often enough, uh, that is fail to follow through on your commitments, I'll begin to think that perhaps you don't mean what you say. So there is some tie-in. The third one is competence. My perception that you have the skills, knowledge, ability in order to do what you commit to do. The fourth is care. The sense that um, my concerns, my interests are as important to you as your own. And that when you're making a decision, you'll keep my interests in mind as well and act in ways that would support both of us. Now, care is something of the trump card, a high uh, perception that is a score that I give you. Uh, if I believe you really care for me, then I'll overlook uh, some weaknesses in some of these others. A low care score is going to weigh very heavily in my fundamental sense of trust in you. Now, these come, these first four, come from Charles Feltman in his book, The Thin Book of Trust. It is a great, uh, a great read. So I encourage you to pick that up, take a look at it. We added to Charles' personal characteristics, uh, vulnerability. When someone is willing to be open, to show their own challenges, uh, their own weaknesses, where they need help, uh, when they ask for feedback, we assess that person to be trustworthy as well, contrasted with 
uh, the people who play it really close to the vest. Now, these five are all personal characteristics. They are attributed to the person. Uh, they tend to follow you. Uh, whatever decision or question of trust is before the team at all, at the moment, rather. Uh, and they don't change readily over time without uh, some significant uh, data change, some significant discussion uh, that says we've changed. There are also situational factors. Uh, these come into play uh, based upon the different issues that are in front of us. The first one is how much is really at stake? So if I'm leaving town, um, it takes a certain amount of trust for me to know you and invite you over to come feed my dog. It takes a different level of trust uh, for me to have you pick up my daughter from her school. In the same way, uh, uh, in our organization, I might be quite comfortable with you explaining our strategy to field personnel. I might struggle uh, to have you deliver that same message uh, to the board. So amount at stake can affect my sense of trust. How aligned are our interests involved? Most of the time on good teams, we uh, take and we assume that everyone's interests are aligned. I've worked with teams around reorganization, uh, executive teams, dis deciding upon the best structure organizationally to support their strategy. When we've had those discussions, they've been pretty easy when it's already known and understood that uh, this reorganization will not change who's sitting at the table and who reports to whom. On the other hand, when there is some question, when it's possible that somebody might not be here or someone who is up here today, maybe your boss tomorrow, all of a sudden our interests now are at odds. We have competing interests that are playing into our heads. And while that may not make the decision for us, it is known and understood and affects the levels of trust uh, within the team as we take on that task. The last is frequency, depth, specificity of communication. Generally speaking, more information, more frequent, uh, more specific, leads to higher levels of trust. Lower uh, information sharing about any particular issue leads to less, particularly in times of high change or volatility. So these are the discrete factors involved in trust. Knowing these gives us a language to talk about it. So instead of only having the nuclear option of saying, I don't trust you or there's no trust on the team, one can say something like, in this particular instance, John, I believe you and what you say, but I have some question about your ability to follow through on this. Can we talk about that? I can say our lack of vulnerability as a team causes me to feel less safe. Can we talk about that? I can say I have a concern that our interests on this decision are not closely aligned. None of these are the end of the discussion. They're not meant to be. Each of those is a really great beginning to a discussion so we can get down, we can exchange more information, we can give uh, reassurances, we can put other things in place so that we build safety in the team and we continue to grow and be effective. Try these out. The words that I provided in quotes here at the bottom, you've heard me use a uh, variation of them, the examples that I just gave. Those are good words, so you might actually want to uh, write those down and use those. So the discussion, here's a, a way to help a team discuss trust, and it's not the only way. So I'd invite you to join in with the discussion with me on how to build trust uh, within teams. If you know of other factors, I'd love to know your thoughts on that as well. If you're viewing this on my website, https colon forward slash forward slash rfblive.com, then head over to my YouTube site and leave your comment.
Thanks so much for watching.